After watching this video, you will know everything about web automation in Power Automate Desktop. This is not a theoretical exercise. We're going to build a real world robot that is going to add purchase orders into a web application. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Thomas and you're watching Tom's Tech Academy. Now make sure to watch this video till the end because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a trick that's going to make your automations way more stable and accurate. And if you don't know this trick, web automation in Power Automate Desktop is just horrible. Now, if this video is useful for you, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up because apparently that helps the YouTube algorithm. This is the application that we're going to automate in this video. We're going to populate these fields, submit the button, and based on that, there will be a new purchase order added to the system. The data that we're going to use to create these purchase orders, you can find in this Excel file. So make sure to download the file, copy it to your desktop, and then you see here the data that we're going to input in this web application. You can find a link to both the web application and the Excel file in the description of this video. Okay, then let's open Power Automate. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect with the Excel file. So I'm going to search for Excel. And then you will see an activity that's called Launch Excel. This is the one you need. And this activity we use every time if we want to connect with an Excel file. Then Power Automate lets us choose whether we want to connect with a blank document or with an already existing document. And I'm going to select the already existing document. And then it also wants to know the path where this document is stored. So click on this icon here. And go to desktop and then click on purchase orders, which is the Excel file that you've just downloaded. Click open and click on save. Now, anytime we launch Excel, we also want to close it. And for that, I'm going to use the close Excel file. And it's a good practice to add this activity immediately once you launch Excel, because normally I tend to forget it. So click on save. And then we have to define and tell Power Automate what we want to do with this Excel file. And what we want to do is read from Excel worksheet. So take this activity and put it between the launch Excel and the close Excel. Now within Power Automate, you can retrieve a single cell or you can um, retrieve a larger range of cells. So I'm going to select values from a range of cells. And then Power Automate wants to know the starting and the, the ending column. So I'm going to put the start column as one, the start row is also one, but the end column and the end row, for that I have to open the Excel file that we've just downloaded. So click here, you see that we have one, two, three, four, five columns and we also have five rows so let's enter that and that's because the first row is a header so go to advanced and then you can select here first line of range contains column names and that will ensure that power automate will skip the first line and it will use it to identify uh, the columns Okay, now this all seems a bit clumsy to enter uh, the end column and the end row, because of course, if you add a new row or a new column, uh, this doesn't work anymore. And for that, uh, Power Automate has a trick. And the trick is to use this activity, get first free column slash row from Excel. And I'm going to put that above the read from Excel worksheet, uh, just like this. And you will see that this activity generates two variables, first free column and first free row. And I'm just going to click on save here. Then I'm going to go back to read from Excel worksheet. And I'm going to say here that the end column is the first free column, but minus one, like this. And end row, that's the first free row. This one, select it, minus one. Make sure that you put the minus one before the percentage signs, otherwise it's not going to work. And then click save. If you go to the read from Excel worksheet, then you will see that Power Automate saves all this information in a variable that it creates, which is called Excel data. And this is the variable that we're going to use. And we're going to iterate through this data table. And for that, I'm going to use the for each, this one. So take it and drop it right below the read from Excel worksheet. And the value that we want to iterate through, that's Excel data. So select it. I will see that Power Automate also generates a new value, which is current item. And current item, so when looping uh, through this data table, is the item that Power Automate is currently looping through. You will see in a split second how this works. Click Save. Okay, let's take another look at the example application, just to see which activities we're going to need to automate entering data here. 
So you see that we have here the purchase order name, the purchase order creator, and the amount, and those are all text fields. Then we have a drop down here, and then we have date requested, which is another uh, text field. And then we have a checkbox um, that we only are going to click on for purchase orders above 50,000 euro. And then of course, we have to click on this button in order to submit that specific record. And the first thing that we're going to do in Power Automate is use the Chrome browser. You can use any browser you want. You can also, for example, use Edge or you can use Firefox, but I like to work with Chrome. So take launch new Chrome and put that before the for each. That's very important because otherwise Chrome will be launched for every single row in the Excel file. Um, then you see here launch new instance and that's correct because we want to launch Chrome. And the URL is this one. So take this URL, copy it, then go back and let's just paste it here. And then click save. Now if we want to launch Chrome, we also want to close it. So I'm also going to search for close browser. That's the one we need. And you can see that one here. And make sure to put that below the for each again. You will see that browser will refer to the same browser, so the same to the same variable that we have created earlier here. Um, so that way you make sure that you close the right browser if you're using multiple browser windows. Click save. Okay, and as we've seen earlier, the first three things that we want to do is populate the text boxes here. One, two, three. So for that, I'm going to go back to Power Automate and I'm going to search for populate. And the one that you need is populate text field on web page. This one, make sure that you select the correct one, put it in here, in the for each. And you will see that Power Automate will ask you uh, in which browser it has to type. Of course, that's just browser. And browser is again referring to this variable. So if you have opened multiple browser windows, then you can select the correct one by this dropdown. Now Power Automate also wants to know where to type. So I'm gonna click here. And then you can click here on add UI element. Um, Power Automate will take you to the browser. And if you do not see uh, the red box or you see any other uh, trouble when opening the browser, it is possible that you have not installed the extension yet or you have not activated the extension yet. And you can find the extension here. And if everything is correct, then you should also see here uh, Microsoft Power Automate. So you see here the UI element picker, and you can also drag it around if it's in front of some of the um, elements that you want to, to scrape. Okay, um, now as you see, um, Power Automate generates this red box, and if you have selected the right, the right element where you want to type, you can click Control and then click. Um, and in general, you see, for example, that in this case, you can uh, select a larger box and a smaller box. And the rule of thumb is to always uh, use the smallest box that you can um, create. So highlight the text box, click Control, and then click. And after we've selected where we want to type, we also have to indicate what we want to type. For that, I'm going to click here on the X. And I'm going to choose Current Item. I'm going to click on Select. And then I have to tell Power Automate, the current item is already telling Power Automate which line it has to use. It's going to start with the first one, then to the second one, etc. But I still have to tell Power Automate which column I want to use. And the first column is the column name. And the second one is creator, by the way. So let's go back to Power Automate. And let's put between square brackets, name. Click Save. And let's continue with the second field. So again, select the populated text field on web page. Click on UI elements, add UI elements. And for some reason, um, Power Automate is taking me to Excel and I want to be taken to Chrome. So I just navigate to Chrome. And the second element where we want to type is PO creator. So press control and click. And then again, I'm gonna click on the current item, select. And now I'm not gonna go for name, but I'm gonna add creator like this. Click save. So those three fields are all the same. Let's continue with the third one. UI element, add UI element. And UI element where I want to type is amount. So press control and click. Um, then here I'm gonna go for current item. And make sure that you put between square brackets the amount and click save. Okay, let's go back uh, to the application for a second. 
I will see now that we have um, not a text box, but a drop down and we can select one of these options. What's really important if you're automating a drop down that this data has to be exactly the same as the data in this Excel file. In this case, it's exactly the same. So those records exactly match the options uh, from this list. So let's go back to Power Automate and let's check out which activities we have to automate this element. So let's search for dropdown and this is the one you need. Set dropdown list in a web form. So take it and drag it to uh, below the populates and still in the for each. Again, uh, Power Automate wants to know the browser instance. We only have one UI element. So click here, click add UI element and then click here and click control click. Um, then you see here operation. Uh, clear all options, that's not correct. And you can select the correct item either by index, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, etc., or by name. And in this case, I'm going to go for name. And then Power Automate wants to know the name. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on current item. And this one is referring to a vendor. So let's put a vendor between square brackets. Click save. Okay, then we still have date requested. So that's again a text uh, item. And that's again a text box. So search for populate. Uh, populate text field on web page. Your element I'm going to generate. That's date requested. Control click. And then here I'm going to add current item. And make sure that you use um, date space requested here and then click on save okay in this specific company they have a rule that they need a cfo approval for any purchase order above fifty thousand euro um, so we're going to install a rule for that and for that you can use the if activity and this is the one you need and make sure that you put the if also in the for each and then the first operand um, you want to check. So I'm going to put here current item between square brackets amount operator is greater than. And also here, this is very important. It can be greater than or equal to, but in this case, it's greater than only above 50,000 euro. We need CFO approval. So not for 50,000 euro itself. And then the second operand is, of course, 50,000. Click on save. Okay, and in case the amount is more than 50,000, we want to uh, check this checkbox. And the activity that we need here is set checkbox state on web page. So take this one and put it here in between. UI elements, add UI elements. And make sure that you again use control because otherwise uh, you are just going to check the checkbox like I do now. So click control and then click. And you will select the checkbox. Also here you can uh, choose the desired end state. So you can uh, choose whether you want the checkbox to be checked or unchecked. And in this case, I want it to be checked. Click on save. Let's go back to the application. Okay, and then there is still one thing that we need to do, and that's of course, uh, click on the button at purchase order. So I'm gonna search for the click activity, uh, click link on web page, that's the one you need. And make sure to put it under the if, and if you put it in the if, it will only uh, submit the records uh, that have an amount uh, of more than 50,000 euro. So again, select the UI element. And then click here on add purchase order by clicking control. And then click on save. Okay, this was the entire automation. Um, I'm going to show you something very important in a second. This was our entire automation. Let's run our bot and we can do that by clicking on the run button. And this is exactly what sometimes happens when using Power Automate. For some reason, it goes out of the browser and it starts clicking on all kinds of random buttons in uh, Microsoft Windows, which is really weird and which is really inconvenient. Um, but luckily, we have a trick for that. And that trick is quite easy. Um, first of all, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, Launch New Chrome and I'm going to click here on Windows State uh, Maximized. 
And that will make sure every time you open the browser, the size of the browser and the position of the elements is exactly the same. Um, click on save, but that doesn't uh, quite solve the problem. So what we have to do is navigate to this uh, populate text field on web page, open it, go to advanced, and then we're going to disable populate text using physical keystrokes because we don't want the robot to send physical keystrokes. We want it to just work in the background of the application. So disable this one. And let's also do that for all the other items. So go to advanced, disable the first one. Unfortunately for the dropdown, you cannot change this configuration. We get to this one, advanced, disable it. And also for the set checkbox, you cannot change it. Then go to the click activity, advanced, and here change send physical click, disable this one and click on save. Okay, let's close Excel. And let's go close the browser and let's try running this flow again. And you see in this case, the trick worked and we have entered all the records correctly. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. If you have any questions or face any challenges, please leave a comment and I will try to help you as good as possible. If my content is helpful for you, don't forget to subscribe because there are way more Power Automate desktop videos coming. There is another video on my channel where you learn everything about Excel automation in Power Automate desktop and you can find that video right here. See you in the next one.